What is up guys, this is the NJB here, and today I'm going to try and make a short video on why I think Real Madrid did badly in the 17-18 season. So, I'm going to go over some things that I thought they did wrong in the beginning of the season, and kind of how I knew that Madrid wasn't going to have a good season from the start. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So the first thing that went wrong for Real Madrid was the summer transfer window. So Real Madrid, they were pretty bad in the transfer window. They sold Pepe, Morata, James Rodriguez, and Mariano Diaz. And these players were very good players for Real Madrid. Um, Pepe is a really good defender. He was aging, so I'm not too mad about them selling him. But letting Morata go, I think I was the most frustrated about that transfer because Morata was Real Madrid's biggest um, or their best um, striker last season. And Benzema, he spent a lot of last season just injured and he just wasn't finding the net. He's pretty useless if you ask me. In this season, I mean, I don't think I need to explain it. Five goals in the league, it's pretty pathetic. So, Salah Morata was really foolish for Real Madrid. James Rodriguez, Mariano Diaz. I mean, these two players were also good attacking players, and Mario Diaz is definitely one of like Madrid's best younger players at the time, and they let him go, which is foolish. Thomas Rodriguez, he's a really good attacking midfielder. When he just signed for Real Madrid, I didn't think he fit into the squad too well. He seemed kind of awkward whenever he'd play, and also he'd be out of position a lot of the time. But I think with Zidane's like, style of play, and with his just all out attacking football, I think that Thomas Rodriguez was a really good player for Real Madrid. So if Real Madrid was going to let a lot of these players go, and remember, they performed well last season because mainly because of the squad depth, and there was just not a bad player who Zidane could pick to put on his team. If Madrid are going to let some of these players go, you would think that they'd replace them, right? Well, they didn't really do that. They bought only The only players they bought were Teo Hernandez and Danny Ceballos. And these players are good, don't get me wrong, but if you're going to buy players, First of all, you have to use him. These players hardly saw game time. Um, Danny Ceballos, I think he's a good midfielder, but Real Madrid barely gave him time to show his talent. And I think that's another issue with Real Madrid. Like this season, Real Madrid, they just didn't seem to show faith in their bench players. I mean, Kovacic, Danny Ceballos, um, don't remember all the other midfielders, but I think those two midfielders, I really think that Madrid should have given them more playing time. Uh, also, I, the one I was thinking of was Asensio. So those three players, Asensio was great last season, and you'd think with his performance last season that they'll give him more playing time, and they'll give him more time to grow. I mean, he scored against some big teams. He scored against Barca, scored against um, Bayern Munich, and a bunch of other teams. And you'd think that they'd give him more playing time just so he can develop more, but no. For him, back to the bench, coming on like 70 minutes each game. I mean, it's just ridiculous that they do that. And they just wouldn't change the squad. I don't see, like, I just don't understand why Real Madrid would stick with the their main midfield, Cruz, Modric, and Casemiro. And these guys, they played pretty much every game. They sit on go-to midfield. And honestly, I think this was the first season where I, I really wanted Modric to take a seat because even though I think he's still a great midfielder, and I think he's so important to Real Madrid, many of his passes, they just, they're just not the same like they used to be. Most of his pass rate, ah, most of his passes are going sideways, they're going to the lines. And if you want to be more dangerous when you're attacking, you mainly want to pass down the middle. Also, whenever he'd create space, I was watching a video on this, and the guy was, he gave a good analysis of Modric and why he's so useful, but whenever Modric would create space, rather than dribble into the space, kind of like Iniesta would do, he would just pass the ball upfield. And you should know that when you're playing, like, if you want to kind of like cause problems to your, uh, like the other team, you want to dribble into space, because when you dribble, uh, players on the other team will follow you and come out of positions, and that allows your teammates to take that space and get into more attacking positions. It just helps the team when you br you bring the ball up. And that's what I think Modric was kind of lacking this season. And it's not just Modric. I think all of Madrid's midfielders were kind of lacking that. So, oh yeah, midfielder I also forgot to bring up was Isco. Um, Isco would do that, but this season, because I guess Ronaldo was playing more of like a center forward, um, he wasn't really able to do that. They're kind of using him as like a winger at times or as a forward, and I think he's best in midfield. So I think Isco, Kovacic, Asensio, Jason Biles, I think these guys really should have got more playing time and Zidane should have trusted them. Um, Cruz, he's a great player, 
but when it comes to just like pure attack and play, I think he's good at like controlling and dominating the midfield, but he's not that guy that can just dribble in and beat players, like take on like three players and just score goals, like Isco or Sensio would. I mean, you need these type of players if you want to win the league, because you need goals coming from all angles. That's what Real Madrid had in the 17 or 16, 17 season, and that's what we did not have in this season. And I think Real Madrid really needs to look at that. So those are basically the main things I think went wrong with Real Madrid this season. Um, really, it's just they sold a lot of their good attacking players. And I think that's, like, as I'm watching football more and more, I feel like what I'm really starting to notice is that the teams that win the leagues, or the league, in mostly like different countries, or specifically in La Liga, I guess, for this video, um, which is Barcelona, they have teams that, I mean, they have players that can score at least like 25 goals or more, or let's say at least 20 goals or more a season. And they don't just have one player that can do that. They have at least two. Last season, Real Madrid had Ronaldo and Morata. Both these players scored at least 20 goals a season. Um, Morata has only managed to like 15 in the league, but still outside of the league and other competitions, he managed to score a lot. And he's still like a really good attacking player. He dribbles a lot takes defenders out of position, um, when defenders see him coming, I mean, it's just a pain, like, as someone who's played as the, a defender in games, it's a pain when you have an attacker that just likes to dribble down towards your own goal, because it makes you, it takes you out of position, you have to chase them, you kind of get tired, I mean, it's just better when you have attackers that do that, and it's just frustrating for defenders, especially in that league where the defenders, let's be honest, the defenders aren't the best on average teams, sure in Barcelona, Madrid, and Atleti, their defenders are good, but all the other teams, defensive players, or defensive like talent, it's just not really there, especially when you compare it to like Italy or England. It's not really there, so if Madrid just had more attacking players, kind of like Morata, or like even more like Ronaldo, they could have done better. But they let some players go, left um, Ronaldo, Benzema, and Bale to basically lead Madrid attackingly, offensively, and it just didn't work. Um, I think that Madrid will learn a lesson for this upcoming season and they will sign attacking players. I'll probably make a video on some players that they should sign, but I also hope that they do not sell good players. I mean, Isco, Kovacic, Asensio, Ceballos, I mean, these guys, I mean, I think I should leave Isco out of it because I doubt he's going to go anywhere and I think that he does get a decent amount of playing time. But the other three, Asensio, Kovacic, and Ceballos. I, th I feel like Ceballos would be the one they'd most likely let go because they didn't use him a lot this season and I'd hate for them to sell him because I think he's a good player and I think Madrid should kind of focus on him. Kovacic as well. There are rumors that he might go back to Inter. I haven't heard too much of that recently but I have heard that I think I want to say like a week or two ago and it's possible. I mean he's a good player. He's not getting playing time. I mean it's possible. and. I'm an Inter fan, so I wouldn't be too frustrated at that, but I do want Madrid to do well, so there's that. But all in all, I really think Madrid can really do better just by getting better forwards and not selling the attacking players they have. Um, as I said about Mario Diaz in the beginning of the video, this guy scored 18 goals for Olympic Lyon, and I believe he scored, let me check my notes right now, um, I mean, he, uh, he did um, 5 assists. So, 18 goals and 5 assists, that's good. Can you imagine if he just stayed on Real Madrid and they used him coming on as like a substitute, like 70 minutes, and he came out and scored those goals? I mean, that can help Real Madrid. And I've seen the videos on his goals. These goals are good, and they would have really done well in like how Sedan, um, with Sedan's style of play, just free-flowing attacking football. I mean, I think letting Mariano Diaz go was a bad idea. Um, I don't even know if Madrid had a buyback clause on him, but I bet that... The, high, the people in charge of Real Madrid probably might see statistics and go like, wow, we really messed up. And I just hope that they can realize that they're just good attackers on their team. And when they just let them go and trust Benzema, who I still don't know who's managed to stay in the starting lineup for Real Madrid. When they do that, they can just ruin the team. So that's basically what I have to say. Um, to sum it all up, Madrid went bad this season because they let go of attacking players, didn't replace them didn't change the squad when the same starting lineup was doing bad or not necessarily bad but they're playing average and not enough to win important games they're drawing too many games losing games 
and it's just a complete this complete mess from last season and on top of that um, they just don't play like the good players they have and they don't trust the kind of like reserve players or bench players I guess mostly bench players kind of like the midfielders I said before and yeah those are basically my opinions on how Real Madrid did bad. The face of this next season, they have to sign good players, they have to change the squad, they need to trust in the bench players to just to allow that squad depth. I mean, remember, Real Madrid doesn't have any bad players on the team. I mean, I know that not all the players on Madrid's team are great, but they're not bad, and it's okay to let them play like more often than not. And remember, Modric is getting old. Um, he's still a great midfielder, but he's just not as, I wouldn't say he's, I don't know how to put it. He's just not as effective as he used to be. I mean, a lot of his passes are going to the sides, and that's not the best thing you want to see from a midfielder. Now, it could be because Real Madrid's at attacking style of play. I mean, Real Madrid's attackers aren't making the right runs as they used to, or aren't making right runs, like, at all, because Ronaldo's the only player who actually knows how to attack well. If you look at Benzema, he's not doing well. So it could be it could be that reason. But we are gonna have a new coach next season. I don't know who it's gonna be. I, mean, I would like for Pochettino to come, but I don't know. Hopefully they choose a good player. I mean a good coach. But either way, that's gonna be it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll make another video talking about players I think Real Madrid should sign. Um kind of more detailed on like which positions I think need more improvement. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers, mates.